Welcome back my phantoms. Phantom S. Kier. I have a good collection of horror stories just for you. If you like this kind of content, subscribe and turn notification on. Don't forget to turn CC on to read along with the stories. Without further ado, let me creep you out. The first story is called Last Phone Call by Friend Watermelon. A few years ago my boss went on holiday for a couple of weeks to Spain. Midway through the holiday, he got a phone call from the police informing him that his sister had died in a fire in her flat. So he rushes back home early, deals with the police and the death and everything. My employers told him to take some time off to grieve, which he duly did. When he came back into work on a Monday morning a few weeks later, we invited him into our coffee room to talk and offer him our sympathies and support. About half an hour later he excuses himself to start work. He walks into his office, sits down at his desk, turns on his computer, and checks to see if there are any answer phone messages. And the very first message that plays is his sister, screaming down the phone help me. Help me. I'm trapped I can't breathe. Still, sends chills down my spine to think about. The second story is called The School Bus by 1F62. When I was a kid I was always the last kid picked up by the bus driver to go to school. One day I was waiting for the bus by myself and a bus with no kids pulled up. The bus driver smiled and told me to hop on. I just had a bad feeling, I said where are the other kids? He said, we will go get them now, just get on. He got pushier and pushier but didn't do anything crazy. I just kept saying no and he shrugged and left. The real bus pulled up a few minutes later. The third story is called Red Light by Elios. Driving home with a buddy from the high school summer job at the local amusement park. It's about 3 in the morning, and there is no traffic at all. Get stuck at the red light that never ends and while we are waiting, another car pulls up next to us. Big black hearse, in immaculate condition. With a clown in the driver's seat, with full makeup and costume on. He never moved, didn't look at us, nothing, just stared straight ahead the whole time. Before we continue, I humbly ask you to like the video and subscribe to my channel. It helps the YouTube algorithm. The fourth story is called The Bridge by Spectre underscore Alabama. I was on vacation in Ithaca with my boyfriend at the time. We had literally, I'm talking 10 minutes, just gotten into town and stopped at a suspension bridge near Cornell's campus. I'm terrified of heights and so, my boyfriend was coaxing me step by step over the bridge. It was gorgeous and we stopped at the middle to take a picture. On the side we had come from there was a parking lot with steps leading to the bottom of the gorge, but on the far side there were hiking paths with no barrier. A woman walked past US and offered to take a picture for us. We declined and she smiled and walked quickly to the far side of the bridge where she smoothly jumped off into the gorge. There was not a second of hesitation, it was almost like she expected the path to keep going. The sound of a person hitting the ground from a jump like that sticks with you. The fifth story is called The Hidden Confession by Anonymous. My parents bought their first house back in 1972. It was a fixer-upper, but they decided to move in right away and fix things as time slash money permitted. Within a few days of moving in, the new neighbors came over to introduce themselves. They also let my parents know that the previous owners had moved out after a nasty divorce. They had lost their second baby from SIDS, and their relationship went downhill from there. My parents were horrified, more so because they were newly pregnant and couldn't imagine going through such a thing. They eventually pretty much forgot all about it. Life went on. They were in love with their new life and their new house. In preparation for the baby, they decided to wallpaper the nursery. Now, my dad told my mom there was no need in wallpapering the inside of the closet, but she insisted. 
She was kneeling down, scraping off old paint inside of the closet when her eyes fell upon something that made her blood turn to ice. Written in crayon, at about eye level for a kindergartner, in childish scrawl was I killed the baby. The sixth story is called Nightmares by d 16. My grandmother's entire life she had a recurring nightmare. In this nightmare, she would be walking down a long dark hallway, turn to the left, open a door, and see something terrible. She'd always wake up before seeing what it was. In her forties she, her husband, my dad, and my aunt were on vacation. They booked the hotel at the last minute, so they ended up having to get two rooms with two twin beds on opposite sides of the floor. My dad wakes up around 3 a.m. and can automatically tell something's not right. He calls out in the darkness, Dad? No response. He turns on the bedside light. Dad? He says, a little louder this time. Still no response. Getting worried, worried, he slides out of bed and shakes his father. He doesn't wake up. My dad ran down the hotel hallway to my grandma's room and started banging on the door. My grandma worriedly opens the door, and my dad shouts something's wrong with dad. He leads her down the hallway. A long hallway. To the last door on the left. My grandmother reaches the door, turns to left, and sees her husband dead in bed. Heart attack. She never had the dream again. The seventh story is called The Playground by Bandito 13. Finding a woman who had committed suicide by hanging herself from the monkey bars of a park I used to work at 6.15 on a very foggy morning. When I got to the gate of the park to open it, park maintenance worker, I could see her 100 yards away at the playground and thought she was just standing there looking at the ground with her umbrella on the ground beside her. It was only when I got closer did I realize she was hanging from a jump rope six inches off the ground. My voice was very shaky during my 911 call. The dispatcher asked me to touch her to see if she was cold, she was very cold and very wet, had been raining all night. The freaky part is this park is very close to an elementary school, and the parking lot is a popular place to drop kids off at, and it was a weekday. The eighth story is called The Man With No Face by Raylil. In a cold winter night in a remote village from Quebec, Canada, in 1990, me and my two brothers were asleep. We were one, three, and six years old. In the middle of the night, someone entered our house without knocking, walked around, and was talking to himself. Our house is two miles from the village, in a rural area. My father woke up, went to the living room where the guy was. He had a car accident one mile from our house with his buddy who died instantly, and his scalp fell in front of his face, so the first time my father saw him, he saw a man with no face. He was drunk and his body was frozen. He was speaking to himself J.E. Vase Morer, J.E. Vase Morer. Which means I'm gonna die, die. The fact that his face was partially frozen might have saved his life, preventing him from losing too much blood. My father took him to the hospital 25 kilometers from our house by car. He did survive. To this day, my father is still blessing the fact that we never woke up during the night with all the noise. Thank you for listening my phantoms. If you make it this far make sure to subscribe and turn notification on so you will be updated of my new uploads and check out our playlist for more terrifying stories. Share with a friend who might like this.